Hello and welcome back to Women's Football Talk, the YouTube channel that brings you all the latest news and stories from around the world of women's football. Now make sure you are subscribed to the channel with the post notification bell turned on so you never miss a video of ours. So today we are going to be looking ahead to the semi-finals that are taking place this week. We'll start off with Tuesday's one where Spain will play Sweden. Now if we have a look at how both sides got on in the quarter-finals, both sides ended up winning by two goals to one. Spain uh, managed to beat the Netherlands by two goals to one. This was a game that went all the way through to uh, extra time. Uh, for me, I'd say Spain were the better side throughout that game. They had more control of the game, more... Uh, likely to score at times, dominated the possession. So it was one where the Netherlands never really seemed to get going at times. It took them quite late to get going, and uh, the way they were shaped up at the back was uh, exploited easily by uh, the Spanish forward line because you had uh, Mariana Caldente, Esther Gonzalez, Alba Redondo, uh, Oihane Hernandez, Ana Bache both getting forward as well as the forward three players that I mentioned and they were just able to exploit the Netherlands back three of uh, Sharida Spitzer, Stephanie van der Graat and Dominique Janssen and then uh, obviously they had to use Victoria Pulova and Esme Brooks as uh, wing backs which isn't their natural position so I do think that um, Spain attack definitely helped out uh, a lot by putting on uh, uh, the pressure. Uh, for me, I think Sweden will uh, pose a different threat. They won't be as far uh, attacking minded in terms of their formation uh, compared to the Dutch. However, it, they this forward line can definitely cause problems. And then when you look at the players they were able to bring off the bench, the likes of Salma Pariuluelo, who scored that winning goal to send uh, Spain through to the semi-final. Alexia Pateas coming off the bench. Ava Navarro as well. Like the uh, depth that Spain has in the forward line and the forward players that they're able to bring on definitely helps them out massively. And as was uh, very apparent in that game against the Netherlands, one player who obviously didn't shine as much uh, because of how tightly she was marked throughout the 87 minutes she was on was Aitana Banmati. Uh, you can see Andrea Jonka had a plan of having Jackie Karuna mark her for the whole time she was on the pitch, wherever she uh, was, Bon Matty, you would see uh, Jackie Karuna within a couple of yards of her, not allowing her time to breathe. Um, so she wasn't able to have the usual impact on a game that we are used to seeing from Bon Matty. Um, we may see the same from Sweden, uh, whether that be Philippa Agendahl or Ellen Rubinson play that sort of role where they try and mark Bon Matty out of a game uh, is going to be very interesting to see. Um, flip that over to Sweden side, they uh, managed to beat Japan by two goals to one. Amanda Illichstadt continuing her fantastic uh, World Cup scoring, uh, I think that was her fourth goal now, and then uh, Philippa Agendahl scoring a penalty. Um, for me, Sweden really made it hard for Japan, considering everyone had, well, me included, had Japan as one of the top teams of this tournament, had them potentially going quite deep. Sweden, especially after that US game, there wasn't there was many questions of whether they would be able to go deep or were, uh, but yeah, they got back to their best selves in that game and. Uh, yeah, I'm really impressed with how Sweden have done. I think one thing that Spain are going to have to worry about is how to beat uh, Zachira Mosevic in goal of Sweden because she's had such an outstanding tournament so far. Uh, probably one of the top three or four goalkeepers at this tournament with the amount of saves she's pulling off and uh, this, that and the other and she's looked absolutely fantastic at the back. So. Uh, that is where I think it's going to be a hard thing for Spain. But looking at Sweden, their forward line had, didn't really perform too well in that last game. So you had Sina Blackstonians, Kasavari Slani, Johanna Wright and Kana Reid, and uh, Fridolina Rolfo. Rolfo was probably the best out of those four players, um, but it wasn't until the substitutions were made. So you've seen the likes of Siv Fee, Jakobsen, Hannah Benison, Lena Hurt coming on. That really had an impact on the game. and give Sweden that bit of extra energy um, to hold on to that win. Um, looking ahead to this one on Tuesday, I think it's going to be a very tight call uh, between the two sides. I would probably just say um, Sweden just to edge this. I think it's one I wouldn't be surprised go to extra time and it'd be nil-nil um, after 90 minutes or we go all the way to penalty shootout and I think uh, I'd have more confidence in Sweden winning a penalty shootout again uh, compared to Spain who are yet to do one. But then again, um, speaking of 
Mateus earlier, how fit is she to play? Because obviously the whole time throughout this World Cup she's been coming off the bench. Uh, can she actually start a game for uh, Spain? And if she can do, that can genuinely have a massive impact. Yes, she's coming back off the ACL injury that we know of, but a player of her quality uh, can always cause threats and it's going to be uh, very interesting to see whether Jorge Vilda does change his lineup in that sense or does he stick with the same 11 players that started against uh, the Netherlands in the uh, round of six, uh, in the quarter final so that remains to be seen um for Sweden their starting lineup I wouldn't expect to see any different you you'll see the usual Musovic Bjorn Illichstedt Eriksen Andersen Rubinson Ahangendal and so on and so forth uh, for them so I wouldn't see many changes in that one um, I think it's just a matter of who gets the substitutions right and at the time and can one of them find a winner should it progress all the way to uh, extra time or uh, potentially penalties who will be the winner in that one so that is my quarter uh, semi-final one preview. We'll be back with uh, another semi-final preview where we look at Australia versus England and that's all to play for. In the meantime, make sure you like and subscribe and turn on the post notification bell so you never miss a video of ours and that you're following us on Twitter and on Instagram for all the latest news and stories from around the world of women's football. In the meantime, we'll see you soon.